I was good, y'all. It's your boy Fiasco, and welcome back to the channel for some OTU Dynasty. Now, I gotta apologize again for the shorter video, but hopefully this little video will make up for it. Um, we're gonna go through the OTU offseason, and of course, this video isn't going to be as well edited as my other videos. I'm going to keep it on my computer that I usually record with, and not the computer I usually edit with. Um, usually I edit using Final Cut Pro, but I'm going to do this using, um, what's it called? Premiere Pro? Adobe Premiere Pro? Just so I can get this video out a little bit quicker for you guys. Um, get this double upload going. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, alright, so you see here we're in week 15. We just beat Army 3410. You see, I wasn't lying about that score, man. Uh, we have a recruiting set up for this week. And we got a, we got a decent amount of recruits, to be honest. Um, I'll show you guys right here. Um, the recruits we have aren't aren't the best because when we started recruiting earlier in the season, nobody even knew that our school existed. So um, we're trying to get this guy, um, Michael Doyle. He's a 75 overall athlete. He's the he's the best guy on the board right now for us. Um, he he's actually a diamond in the rough too. So um, um, I'm looking at his stats right here, and it looks like he's going to be like a, a free safety or a cornerback. That'd be pretty nice if we can get him. Um, over Akron, that'd be insane. Um, we see here we actually got um, a defensive end, Clay Ramser. He's going to be real nice for us, considering how much our defense struggled this year. FAU stole one of our prospects, and you see these guys. None of these guys are, are horrible, and you know that some of these guys are going to be really good in a few years or so. Well, Vince Freeman, uh, he's not going to start next year. Maybe the year after that, when Lean leaves. So yeah, Vince Freeman, he's going to be um, the next quarterback coming in uh, when Lean and Del Porto head out. Uh, some of these guys, not bad, to be honest. I mean, I can't complain about this year's recruiting class. Next year's going to be a lot better. We're going to really go defense heavy. Uh, we're going to have to get a new running back too because next year Brendan Taper leaves, I think. I think he is. I think he's a sophomore. No, I think he's a junior. Let me check real quick. Um, we're gonna go through the roster. I'll show you guys the season stats in a minute. Nah, he's a junior. He leaves next year. Shit. All right. All right. Yeah. Del, Del Porto's a sophomore. And Lee's, Lee's a junior. All right. Let's look at our receivers. Lash is a sophomore. Coelho's is a senior. He's leaving. Gary's leaving. Uh, McTaggart. We didn't see much of him this year, but he's a senior. He's gonna be leaving to Espinosa. He didn't even play at all this year. He's a senior. He's gonna be leaving. Matt Whitfield, God, this guy was huge for us. He's a he's a senior. He's he's gonna be gone. Kennery stepped up a bit when he needed to. I just, I do wish his overall was a little bit higher. Um, let's check our main defensive positions. Terrence Reese, he's gonna be gone. Uh, right ends. Ty Timmons, he was really good for us. He's gonna stuck around for another two years. Uh, Riley Culp, he barely played, um, but he's going to be leaving. Uh, sophomore, sophomore, nothing big in defensive tackles. Um, going into the linebackers, uh, no seniors. I was actually dead wrong this year, making Javon Tapman the, the team captain because apparently he wasn't even a senior. He was a junior. Oh well. Well, he'll be better this year. I thought for sure Javon Tapman was a senior. I could have. I swear, I thought I made him a senior in team builder. All right. Ooh, I'm feeling gassy right now. Uh, Brent Fleming Jr. Check our cornerbacks. Uh, Irvin's gone. Peoples is gone. The pen is gone. Oh my god. Man, Rollins is gone. We're only going to have two returning players. Oh my god. Our secondary is going to be even worse next year, isn't it? Greg Weddle sticking around. Ewing sticking around. Uh, our kicker and our punter, I'm pretty sure, are sticking around too. Alright, so. Things to recruit for next year. Definitely some cornerbacks. We can't stay weak there for like another two years. That's going to be ridiculous, right? You see the NCAA passing leaders, Lean is in the bottom. He was injured for a decent amount too. Brandon Taper is actually in the middle. Not pretty impressive. Receiving with field towards the middle. And we got three people leading in um, solo tackles, mainly because this game barely gives you assisted tackles. It's really weird. I don't get it. Uh, let's check our season stats. Um, since this is the last game of the season, uh, we're just going to check our stats now. So Nate Lean... Uh, 101 for 181, 1,500 yards, 8 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions. I can definitely see that getting better next year. Uh, Dub Porto, 5 for 9. Uh, actually, 5 and 9. Um, he did pretty well. I mean, Riley Dub Porto and Nate Lean, they both had their rough bumps, but both of them played really well. 
and I, I can't complain about that. Taper was a superstar this year, almost breaking a thousand yards. If he would have had one more good game, he would have easily broken a thousand yards. Like even if he played a little bit better against California, I think he only got 20 yards. They shut his ass down. But he got eight rushing touchdowns. They got a decent amount of rushing touchdowns. Lean got four. Rudy Holloway got five out of 19 of his carries. Too bad he's a senior, man. I would have loved to see more of him. Um, looking towards the receiving. Uh, Whitfield, 49 receptions for 600, bleh, 639 yards. That's most on the team. And Josh Gary, 408. I'll look for our touchdowns. William Lash, I'm pretty sure he got three touchdowns towards the end of the year. Either that or it was only two. So if he can play like he did towards the end of the season this year, next year, like but all season, he's gonna he's gonna be crazy good. Oh Jesus, I didn't even check the rest of the stats. I'm a bum. Alright, let me let me get to um blocking. Who allowed the most sacks? Russ. You're a bum, bro. Are you serious? Nine sacks given up at right tackle? It's not like you're going up against J.J. Watt every week. He even led the team in tackles. Then it was Weddle, Tabman, Fleming, Irvin, Penn. Then we go for tackles for loss. Ty Timmons. Most, tack most sacks. Ty Timmons. Most interceptions. Irvin and Peoples tied. Longest interception return. Peoples only one yard. None of them were really interception returns. Javon Tatman. Uh, three pass deflections, which is kind of surprising. He led the team in that. He's a, you know, he's a linebacker. Three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries. Uh, not much yardage. We didn't get a safety this year. We didn't block any kicks. Um, we really need to turn up the, the turnovers because that's what kills us. We had so many turnovers on offense, and we had like maybe, Jesus, like eight turnovers on defense. It was, it wasn't pretty. So, with all those stats out of the way, I'm not going to do the top 25 right now because they're going to change, like, literally as I go to the next week. So, let's go to the next week, and I'll show you guys the top 25. Alright, we're going into, into Conference Championship Weekend, and we have um, a commitment. Um, Kevin Woods, left outside linebacker, 63 overall, he just committed to our team. We're still in that fight with Michael Doyle. I'm just glad he hasn't locked us out yet, because, man, that would be tragic. Uh, we got some coach XP, so that's pretty good. I'm trying to um, boost up these guys. I'm trying to do better in recruiting next year. Oh, we're not allowed to recruit this week. Okay, that's tragic. Alright, so we're going to go over to the top 25. Since it is conference championship week, these, for the most part, should be set in stone. Um, if Texas A&M wins their championship game, or wins it this week against Tennessee. Oh yeah, because I moved them over to the SEC, I think. Because, yeah, I'm moving on to the SEC. So if they win this game, they will be going to the national championship. If Tennessee wins, I think they'll be going. And we have Ohio State, um, Alabama, Houston, Tennessee, Clemson, Ole Miss, Texas, Florida State, Wisconsin, UTEP. UTEP is 11-1. Well, and one. They must have had, like, the easiest schedule in the world. If they, they almost went undefeated. They lost to, I think, Tulsa. Uh, UCLA, Nebraska, Iowa, Virginia Tech, Washington State, Northwestern, Georgia, Florida, Louisville, Pittsburgh, Kansas State, Washington, Michigan State, and Navy. You know what? I just had a little epiphany. Do you guys want to see an NCAA 2K17 basketball series? Like, I can do... I think that'll be pretty fun. Like, I can user all the teams and, like, um... Um, play, like, um, the game of the week or whatever every week. And we'll see... We can see what happens... I think that would be pretty cool. So uh, leave, down, leave down in the comments below if you want to see like an NCAA 2K17 um, basketball series. I think that would be pretty fun. So um, we're going to see what the bowl games are after this week since this is conference championship weekend. Um, I'm surprised Alabama doesn't have a, co have a conference championship game. Probably because they're in the same division as Texas A&M. Uh, Texas A&M, the only undefeated team left. Uh, we're going to go over to the Heisman Watch. JT Barrett's leading, Dalvin Cook second, Trevor Knight, um, Tony Ogoli, and Luke Falk from Navy and Washington State. It's pretty nice. Uh, we will see who wins the Heisman next week, I think. Oh, and I think... Uh, what's his face? Greg Weddle. He's leading best returner. Yeah, I think he's going to win best returner. That's crazy. Um, so he's going he's to come back next year, and he's going to be able to get a two-tie pretty fun um we're gonna go to the bolt projections um just to see who's predicted to play in the national championship 
Oh my god, it's like Alabama is getting an easy road here because they don't even have to play in the SEC championship and they're getting the national championship opportunity even though they're third. So Ohio State is kind of getting cheated out of this deal because they're second. I don't know, I think it should be Ohio State up there as much as I hate Ohio State. So I was going to say that I was about to do some adjustments in the recruiting, but apparently I can't. We're not allowed to recruit during conference championship week. So I think that's it for this week. So we're going to advance to bowl week, actually bowl season. All right, so here we have the Heisman winner, Dalvin Cook, the running back for FSU. 182 carries for 1,114 yards and 13 touchdowns and seven receiving touchdowns. He wins the Heisman. Um, he barely beats JT Barrett. Actually, that's not barely beating him. That's a decent margin, to be honest. That's almost that's over 600 votes. Uh, congratulations to him. And Greg Weddle wins Returner of the Year. That's pretty good. How about that? Hey, that's pretty good. So that's our first ever award for OTU. It's pretty nice. Greg Weddle, you deserve it, man. Two returns for touchdowns and every other, like practically every game, he was returning a ball for like 50 yards, giving us great field position. Wait, I'm really proud of that kid. All right, so I just upgraded something in the skill tree. I'm really going heavy on the recruiting side because I'm not too worried about um, little skills or whatever we can get in the middle of a game. Um, I can kind of deal with the without the anti-freeze and the road warrior right now. I'm really going to recruit heavy right now. Um, three more ranks, and we'll be able to um, get these things for Pipeline States, Letter of Intent, and Kitchen Sink. Damn, I think Kitchen Sink is going to really help us once we're able to do it. Alright, um, defensive coordinators, nothing much, and on the offensive coordinators, we're really just work, working towards one skill at a time. Uh, I'm not going to work beyond, I'm not going to focus on game management until our team gets really, really solid with the recruiting. And this is what I hate about doing commentaries, my mouth gets really dry. Oh my god, I love Blue Gatorade, bro. Our job security. Just making sure I don't get fired. I'm pretty sure my security was at 100%. Yep, they're pretty happy with that 4-8 and eight record. I am too. He's his first year in existence, so we go 4-8. and eight. That's actually really good when you think about it. Alright, so... After conference championship week, let's see. Oh my god, I think Tennessee beat Texas A&M. What? They beat them in overtime. And Tennessee winds up beating Texas A&M 10-7 in overtime. So, 11-2, Tennessee is on top. I think we're going to see an all-SEC national championship. That's that's crazy. So, it's Tennessee, Alabama, Houston, Texas A&M loses their ch conference championship game. That kicks them out of the picture. Um, Clemson, Ole Miss, Ohio State, Texas, Florida State, and Wisconsin. Who would have thought, man? Tennessee and Alabama fighting for the national championship. That's just crazy. Well, this will be a good one. Kansas State versus Washington State in the Alamo Bowl. I, I, I get fucks with that. I get fucks with that. Well, in Michigan State, they beat us earlier in the year. They're playing against LSU in the Gator Bowl. Texas A&M, after losing their conference championship game, they get knocked off to the Capital One Bowl, which is actually in our stadium in the in the camping in the Camping World Stadium in Orlando. So they'll be playing in Orlando against Wisconsin. That'll probably be the best football they'll see all year, to be honest. Um, Ole Miss versus Northwestern in the Outback Bowl, Nebraska versus UCLA in the Rose Bowl. That'll be pretty cool. Of Texas and UTEP. Oh my god, if UTEP beats Texas, I'm done, bro. You had her 12 and 1, but when you think about it, UTEP isn't that great of a football program. Like, what are they even doing in the top 25? They need a super hard schedule next year. They need to get exposed. Ooh, this will be a nice game. Houston versus Clemson in the Sugar Bowl. Number 3 versus number 5. Number 8 versus number 7 in the Orange Bowl. Florida State versus Ohio State. And the Cotton Bowl is Florida versus unranked Oklahoma, even though there's 9-3. and three. Um, We all know Oklahoma is a great team. This will probably be a great game regardless of their ranking. And then the BCS National Championship game is number 2 Alabama versus number 1 Tennessee. Both teams have two losses. This game, this season in general has just gone crazy. It's like the top five teams have lost like every week. Check out the game preview, see who they're favoring. And of course, that kid's favoring um, number two, Alabama. 
Uh, looks like they have the better stats all around except for total defense and pass defense. So yeah, I can see why Bama would be the favorite. I mean, when is Bama not the favorite? The favorite. I don't think we're allowed to recruit this week, so we're just going to advance the week and see what happens in the national championship. All right, and with that, we are finally at the end of the season. Let's see who won the championship. And of course, the Alabama Crimson Tide takes down the Tennessee Volunteers in the national championship game. Let's go check out the let's go check out the score. 21 to 6. This game was eh, I don't think it was even that great. Yeah, Bama had control from the very beginning. I don't think that was a very good national championship game. Uh, I think it would have been a lot better. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I can't change that. So let's check out some of these other bowl games. Uh, Florida and Oklahoma. That was a pretty close game. Uh, only a seven-point different. Only seven-point difference. Uh, Florida State and Ohio State was eh. Uh, Houston beat Clemson. Ooh. Wow, UCLA destroyed Nebraska. Ooh, hold up. I want to see how UTEP did. Uh, where they at? 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 UTEP? UTEP? Where is UTEP at? Trying to see if UTEP got destroyed. And UTEP definitely got destroyed. 38-13. They got exposed. Yeah, UTEP couldn't even score in the first half that much. Alright, that's the end of the season. Uh, let's see where this leads us. Before we do that, look who's an All-American. Greg Weddle is an All-American kick returner. First team all NCAA. How about that? Uh, we're still in a recruiting battle with Michael Doyle. Um, two, three more recruits lock us out. Yeah, let's see, let's see what we can do here. All right, so our security is still safe. We went four and eight last year. We're gonna try to get at least five next year, but I don't see how we're going to do that well with such a weak secondary next year. All right, so we're not gonna really bother with coaching changes. So we don't really care what everybody else is doing, but we will be looking at the players leaving. Let's see who played, the, who has played their last down at OTU and Rod Yates oh, he's transferring he's going to Akron you really want to go you really want to go to Ohio instead of Florida is that really what you want all right bro you, want, you never got to play anyway so I don't care about you all right Rudy Holloway is our best player leaving he was he was pretty solid man for a backup running back he did some big things uh Trent Peterson Alan Cowells Alan Cowells was a great addition to our offense I'm good I'm definitely gonna miss him Douglas Irvin, Terrence Reese, Riley Culp, uh, Josh Gary, another huge player. Quinn Peoples with his two picks. He even got a pick against Michigan State. That's something to write home about. Matt Withfield, our best receiver of the year. He played his last down at Orlando Tech. Uh, he didn't play that much, did he? Yeah, because he was behind Javon. Uh, Garrett Maxwell, Gregory McTaggart, and Jarvis Kirk, Timmy Penn. Oh, right, Timmy Penn was, oh, Timmy Penn was so good. He had a great last game against Army. Uh, Cody Brooks, um, Alton Rollins, and Rod Yates is transferring. I hate you for the rest of my life now. And Anton Wolf. All right, so those are our players that are leaving. And let's go to the next stage, transfer requests. Uh, I don't even have Madden 25. Let's see if we have any transfer requests. Ooh, we do. Hamp Cheevers, a uh, cornerback from Boston College. They actually beat our ass earlier in the year, 37-7. Um, I guess he felt sorry for us and wanted to come. So, uh, we'll bring him in. He's, he's actually from Temple Terrace, Florida, so he probably wants to be closer to home now. Uh, we'll bring him in. He'll be able to play next year. All right, so we're still in a recruiting battle for Michael Doyle. I'm really just going to put all of my points on Michael Doyle if I can. I really, 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 really want this guy on our team. Let's see if we can make it happen. Man, these are some solid, like, commitments we got. Like, we got four people over 70 overall. Oh, yeah. We are just dumping it all on Michael Doyle, man. Please, please, just please come to our school. Just please come to our school. At least half of it. At least half of it. I'm going to put at least 5,000 points on this kid. I really wanted to go to our school. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a bit much to put this much on a three-star caliber recruit, but he's the best guy on our board. I need him on our squad. Uh, put a decent amount on this guy. Put a good amount on him. 
I'm going to outdo FIU. I'm going to outdo FIU again. Uh, David Justice, do I really want you? I kind of don't. Yeah, I already have two on wide receivers. What I do need are cornerbacks. Like, I really could use cornerbacks, but I don't think we have anybody. Actually, yeah, I'm going to put a lot more on this guy since we're going to be weak at, in the secondary. And we're really behind on this guy. He, I don't even have enough points because I put so much on the first guy. Although, what I'll do them this, for this guy. Even though he's not that good, I do want the depth. And that's all of our points. If, if, if 5,000 points doesn't get us this top prospect on our board, I'm going to be mega tilted, bro. He, he better come to our school. He's a diamond in the rough. We've been trying to get him all year. And he liked us when he came to visit. So I'm going to advance him next week. And hopefully we get this guy. Let's go, baby. We got him. Michael Doyle has come to OTU. Do we have any other commitments? No, because we're trashy only and we got all of our commitments earlier in the year. We signed the gem three-star prospect. Let's go, baby. Let's let's check out our commitments, our final commitments. Who is going to be the next generation for OTU? So Michael Doyle, Clay Ramser, Josh Larson, and Gene Hancock and Vince Freeman. You guys are probably going to see a lot of these guys upcoming in the next season. Uh, Mike Hopkins, Jerome Jansen, Ricardo Morgan, Nick Wright, uh, Steve Hartman, Maurice Jones. Might as well. Is, that, is, he, is he related to Jones, Drew? He might be. Uh, Kevin Woods, Will Allen. Scroll down a little bit more. Brandon Sullivan, did you not sign with anybody? Hello? You're just not going to go to college, even though you're interested in us and nobody else? You're just not going to come? All right. God, I'm so excited to have Michael Doyle on this team, man. As a freshman, he's going to be 75 overall. This guy's going to be so good. All right, let's check, let's check on how much our players have progressed. Oh, my God. Taper turned into a goon. He is 87 overall now. <laughs> this is exciting. Uh, Del Porto and Lean both went up by four. Um, Lean is still going to be the starter. I really like having a scrambling quarterback back there. Um, our freshman hasn't shown up because he, he didn't train. Um, Taper, good God, 87 overall. He's gotten a little bit faster, stronger. Oh, he put it in work this year. He has better acceleration. His awareness is much better. 87 overall. Yeah, how about that? Let's check out our wide receivers. Lash in the 80s, only as a junior though. And now his speed is a 95. That is ridiculous. God, these guys are crazy. These guys are showing their dedication. They're showing that they want this program to succeed. This is what I like to see. Cameron Kennery, I really hope you're catching up better. Did you catching it better? Uh, yes, it did by a little bit. 68. Not bad. All right. Um, did our offensive lineman get better? Yeah, 63, 65, 72, uh, 59. Still not good. Yeah, 73. So our offensive line definitely got better. We'll be recruiting that a lot. Um, we're definitely going to need um, more defensive linemen, and we're going to strengthen our secondary uh, throughout the years. Uh, defensive tackles, Mike Marcus, Marquise Goodley got a lot better. Our linebackers, got, everybody got a lot better. Even Javon, uh, 75 overall now, 76, 69 now. Actually, our corners are going to be so bad this year. Oh my God. All right, Weddle and Ewing both got a lot better. They're both in the 80s. Uh, 74 overall strong safety. Our kicker got a lot better too. 76. And our puncher is in the 80s now. So, so we now have five players who are 80 overall or higher. These guys. These guys are dedicated. This is the type of hard work I like to see. But I think we might have to cut some players because our roster got a lot bigger. Actually, I don't think we have to, do we? I don't think we have 70. Oh, we have to cut one player? Are you serious? Dude, I don't want to cut one player. Yeah, Eric May. Um, we don't need four left tackles. You're gone, buddy. Sorry. So that's going to be our only cut this year. It must suck to be cut by Orlando Tech, bro. And I think... 
if that is going to do it for this offseason. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry for the commentary being a little shaky. I made sure to do this all in one take so I could get this out for you guys tonight. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.